It's not going to happen until he's ready for it to. You might say, well, President Reagan wouldn't speak lies. Well, when you're defending your country and when you're bargaining with atheists, you speak many things that are fed into the machine. And so it goes. Unfortunately, you and I know that the they of 25 feeds much of the information that the two kings are saying in this day. All right? But underline the point. Your father's in control. It's set for a time appointed. 28. Then shall he return. Now we're back to Antichrist, okay? Then shall he return into his, his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, against those that hold out for God, those that hold out for the true Christ. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. He will con keep as much confusion as he can, but yet remain in control, whereby neither superpower makes a stand. Do you understand? There will not be a total even agreement reached, possibly on paper, but there will still be that suspicion. And from Ezekiel 38, we know there was some one-sided dealing because Russia ends up with an army and we don't through the dealings. That's, that's uh, definite. That we don't even have to speculate about. It's a fact. For it is that army that comes against us at Haman Gog and God destroys it, not us. God destroys it. Okay, so we have them talking, and it, it gives you rather a strange feeling that this would be going on in part, even if we were speaking, and we didn't plan it. We didn't plan it that way. It just happened that way, that it happened this Feast of Tabernacles. 29. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south. He's going to come toward God's people, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Now, what this means in the manuscripts is this. In the first, that is to say, he was successful. He had a victory. He overflowed. He took over. In the latter, in verses 41 through 43 to the end of the chapter, he fails. So what it means is this. He's not going to win as he did in the first, nor is he going to lose in this approach as he did at the end. All right? We have an interim here. And that's what's important to you now. And that interim is what we're going to discuss in God's Word. Verse 30. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved. Who shall be grieved? The dragon, Antichrist, this vile creature. And return. He shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He's going to be very upset, and that's when some people are going to start being delivered up, as it is written in Mark 13, that they are not to premeditate what they say beforehand, but to speak what God gives them at that instant. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. In other words, he will have intelligence with those that have their fly bye-bye suits on, that are ready to be raptured out at any moment. The intelligence will be, of course, not to your benefit. Now, think back on the verse we just read. What troubled him? What troubled him? Read it for yourself. I want you to look down as I say it. For the ships of Chittim grieved him. Well, what's Satan's weakness? What grieves Satan? Now, Chittim, let's don't transliterate, let's translate. Chittim means the bruisers. I want you to remember the verse I gave you this morning from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Between thy seed and his seed, there would be a contention. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his feet. Therefore, it is necessary that we have bruisers. Now, let's read that verse as it is read in the manuscripts. Man has only translated part of this. The other, Chittim, he transliterated for you. And with an English mind, you can't grasp that. I want your English mind to grasp the full weight of it. For the ships, that is to say the vessels of the bruisers, shall come against him. 
Therefore he shall be grieved in return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant because it is the Holy Covenant that is the bruiser's eye. It is Christ's many-membered body that shall bruise his head. And that's the way it should have been translated. What is your body? Is it a vessel or is it not? Of course it is. And altogether, this is not for, not to single anyone out. It is the entire body then that makes up the ship and are the vessel of the bruisers. And I'll tell you one thing further. It is even the ark of the end days, if you would like to know. For you'll be on that ship of the bruisers, or you'll be having intelligence with the wicked one. It's that simple. Is this written in other places in God's Word? Yes, it is. That's why I said I wish I had had, I wish God had given me a week to research this after giving me the truth of it. But He didn't. So that means you're going to. Okay? Turn with me to Numbers. Understand, let me, before we leave Daniel, you'll understand that, um, let's just read just another verse or two before we read. How does he uh, put this in play? And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. That means Antichrist shall actually, in this vein of thought, appear on the scene. And he takes away the, whole, the daily sacrifice, which is your communion. But, of course, in the overall, it was the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, for there was no longer a daily oblation, or that is to say, a daily sacrifice. And it continues on as to how some, some of the believers will stand even to the end to make some pure if they would hear. Now, I don't have to go into that. You know who that's talking about. You know that is God's elect that will stand up at the end and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through them as it is written in Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21. Now turn with me to Numbers 24. Going, uh, Gary told you all about Balaam the other day, and I, I promise you I'm not going to redo Gary's ground there. I won't need to, but we are back in Balaam's territory, okay? Real good. Uh, verse 14 of chapter 24, Numbers. Balak had been trying to get Balaam to do a little false prophesying for him, okay? And we pick it up. And now, behold, I go into my people. Come, therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. That means in the end times. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, those that have eyes to see, he hath said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. In other words, God was making it known. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth. Uh, there's a deliverer coming, the true deliverer. What does he accomplish? 18. And Edom. Again, Edom is the land of Esau. It is the word red in the Hebrew, the same as Adam is ready. Edom in the Hebrew tongue is red. It is that red nation of today, Esau's country. It's Russia, okay? Edom shall be a possession. Seir, that's Esau's mountain, also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Of course, that deliverer is Jesus, the Messiah, when he returns as king of kings. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up this parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. There'll never be that nation again. And he looked at the Kenites. Look at it close. K-E-N-I-T-E-S. That's the sons of Cain. That's the little they in the reading of Daniel. And took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite, or 
Smith Goodspeed translates it Cain, for that's what it is in the manuscripts. Nevertheless, Cain shall be wasted until Asha. This is the Assyrian, and you know that the Assyrian is one of the names of Antichrist from the book of Ezekiel. Your companion Bible will document that and verify it. One of the many names. <clears throat> shall be and shall carry them away captive. And he took up his parable. I want you to know, underline parable. We're talking in a parable. And said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? I can tell you, you will. And ships, ooh, there's that word again. And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim. Now let's read it like it is. Let's complete the job of translating. And vessels shall come from the coast of the devourers, the bruisers and shall afflict Asher, or the Assyrian, and shall afflict Eber. Eber is the base root in a part of Heber. Those across the river, those that get taken in, those that are ready to fly away, and he also shall perish forever. I want you to know, <clears throat> this would sound like, Oh, boy, those people are going to be bombed out even before the judgment. We're not talking about people, beloved. We're talking about nations, all right? Do you know why they're not going to ever be a nation again? Because Jesus Christ is coming as king of kings, and you're going to be part of that nation, or there won't be a nation unless you be one of the kings or queens of the nations he chooses. You won't be. And Balaam rose up, and he went and returned to his place. Now, my, we've been talking about the Middle East. We've been talking about Iraq and Iran. We've been reading all that in just on the strength of Daniel. Surely you would have to have another witness before you would do that. Let's see, where was it? Let's go to Jeremiah, okay? Jeremiah. Chapter 2, I'm going to say, and that's right. Jeremiah chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up along about the seventh verse. Let me set the stage so you understand what we're doing. God's telling Jeremiah, hey, those people are going into Babylon. They're, they're, they're going into confusion. They're not going to believe you, but you go tell them anyway. And I want you to remember the character of Jeremiah. God, in verse one, chapter 1, said, I knew you before you entered your mother's womb. He had chosen this one. When God created the soul, he chose that one. And he's telling them how that Israel would rebel, how his people would rebel. And in verse 7, And I brought you unto a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. Even if you would down to the day, that abomination of desolation that was set. The priests said not. They didn't warn anybody. Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. They didn't know the true Lord, but it slipped into your mind because they had all taken on the false Lord. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal. They were all prophesying towards Satan. Remember, Baal is the king of Babylon, and Babylon in Revelation, the unveiling is Satan. And walked after things that do not profit. It doesn't prophet to serve Satan, Antichrist, even if you think you're serving God. It will not profit. There's only one way you can have eternal life, and that's in the true Christ, the one that paid with his blood on the cross. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. Children's children means from umbilical cord to umbilical cord to the last generation. I think you're it because of the parable of the fig tree. I really think you're it, the final generation. How long that generation is, I don't know, nor does anyone else, but you'd better watch, for prophecy is being fulfilled before your very eyes. Uh, 10. For pass over the isles of Chittim. There we are again. Isles means coast, all right? And sea. Now, let's, let's uh, well, let me finish reading, and we'll back up and translate. 
and send them to Kedar and consider diligently and see if there be such a thing. You see, by transliterating those two words, you really lose it. Kedar in the Hebrew tongue means dark skin. It is the name of all Ishmael's children, that is to say, the Arabian tribes, all of Ishmael's princes. It is the name used in the Old Testament that relates to all Arab nations. Now, Persia, as you well know, Iran and today, they are not Arab. They are Persians. They're a different people. The Arabs know it. And this is one reason that Iraq is so hurt at Syria. Because Syria is an Arab nation. And they have sided with the Persians. And the Arabs most always, most usually always stick together. They try. They fight all the time. But basically overall. Now, listen closely. From generation to generation, the umbilical cord, the umbilical cord, let me translate rather than transliterate. Verse 10. For pass over the isles of the bruisers and see. You go out from where the bruisers are and look and send unto the Arab nations and consider diligently and see if there be such a thing. That's a little plain, isn't it? We were just taking Daniel, and Daniel said, go to the Arab nations and look. And here we're finding in Jeremiah also that the bruisers, that is to say, those that shall bruise the head of Antichrist as the many-membered body, should look there and see if it's happening yet. Is it? You know it is. At least it could be. Were you not to recognize there is a 85 to 90% possibility at this late date that this is the time, then you would not be a very good student or watcher of God's Word. The odds are closing that this is it. So watch. Hath a nation changed their gods? Where are ye, which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. That's Satan. That's Antichrist. They changed from the true Christ to Antichrist. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, that the fountain of the living waters. They've left the true Jesus. Who is the fountain of living waters? We're in the Old Testament, but you know who it is. That's Jesus Christ. He is the living water. They left him and hewed them out cisterns. That means, do you know what a cistern is? A cistern does not have a flow of water into it. It's dead. It's only a storage place for water, so it can't live. Do you understand? There's no living stream. It's a hole in the ground, usually plastered over that will hold water that is poured into it. I'm, I'm likening this, the faith to the true, all right? Uh, cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. That's what Antichrist is for. He can't save you. He can only mislead you. He can only deceive you. Okay, uh, uh, for the sake of time, let's turn, keep, we'll follow this thought in Jeremiah. I would request that you uh, that you cover most of this chapter. I'm, let's read on ahead to, well, what is she doing? Verse 21 of this same chapter, verse 2. Chapter 2, I'm sorry. Chapter 2, verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, speaking to his people again. Holy a right seed, how then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Who's the vine? Christ. You better be careful, friend, who you hook your vine into. I mean, your branch, rather. It's serious in these end times. And do you understand this falls right in with the parable concerning uh, Romans chapter 11, why the branches were cast off so that the other branches could be grafted in? Don't forget it. For though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap. If you use lye, and then try to wash that off then with soap, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord. 
how canest thou say I'm not polluted? I have not gone after Balaam. I didn't. I wasn't deceived. See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dormitory traversing her ways. In other words, you're a camel in heat and nobody can turn you back. That's what the Hebrew says, just to put it plainly. I don't apologize for God's word. I like to teach it like it is so you can understand what's said. I'm not too nice for God's word. He wants the point made. A wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth at the wind at her pleasure. That means at her time, when she is in heat, is her occasion. In her occasion, who could turn her away? This is, uh, and that, that's enough. We're going to skip on a little further. That's the way they chase after Antichrist when he appears, beloved. You might as well get set mentally for it. You could get in front of them with a Mack truck and they'd, they'd smash you. They're going after him, in other words, okay? I think God made that very clear there. Okay. Now, um, okay, let's go to verse 15 of chapter 3 here. And I, I want you to cover all of this. Please do. And you analyze it and take it in for yourself. And I will give you, this is chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Bless your hearts, this is the bruisers, and you're the bruisers. You are those pastors. Don't look at me. I'm just a teacher. He's looking for a people that he's calling out, and they're from all over the nation. And when this comes to pass, he wants them to have the courage to stand up and know there's no giants in the land, and he'll be with you. And you'll win. You'll have the victory. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall, they be, shall that be done any more. You know why? He's going to be with us. So that you know this is the end. The reason they won't be calling for the ark of the Lord is the Lord will be here himself. The uh, next verse will document. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. In other words, why? a throne is not a throne unless the kings own it. Understand? And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. Bless your heart. You have a part in making that come to pass of teaching truth. For the world is in for a deception soon like never before. It's being, the imagery is being created by they. Now, understand I'm not teaching hate against them. God said, leave the tares alone. They're doing the negative part of my plan, and I don't want you to hate them. But I want you to know the truth and know what they're going to do, whereby you can at least recognize it when it comes to pass. You can have a part in that and become one of God's elect. And as it is written in Ezekiel 44, have a special place, well earned. Chapter four, you will remember I used this chapter of Jeremiah quite a bit to document the world that was, because it speaks of the world that was. Less, he's telling, he's te telling you how that you are to go about this, the bruisers, that is. Verse five, declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together, and say, Assemble yourselves, and let us go into the defense cities. That's sound the battle cry, the alarm. That's what we do with this old trumpet out in the backyard. We try to teach the truth through it, and it covers one-third of this earth's surface. We could not have done it without the blessings of God through the bruisers. That's you, and praise God for that. Stir up the standards. I'm sorry. Set up the standard towards Zion. Do you know what your standard is? It's Christ. That's the only standard you need, beloved, the true Christ. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. God's going to do the destroying, so don't get nervous. If you get nervous about it, read chapter 38, and especially the first five verses of 39, where God says, I'll stop them at your border. They're not going to touch you. The lion has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles, that Satan, is on his way. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy cities shall 
be laid waste without an inhabitant. In other words, Michael has booted him out of heaven and he is on earth. Uh, not now, <laughs> when this comes to pass, all right? For, for this, gird ye with sackcloth, lament and howl, for the furious, an furious anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. He's going to boot him out on this earth. But, beloved, you are equipped. Whereby it won't bother you in the least. He's coming in peaceably. He's not coming in to kill anybody or make war. He's coming in to make them think he's the prettiest, best little old Jesus this world ever saw. Okay, if I can just put it that way. And it shall come to pass that that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the king heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. You know what they're going to be wondering when they see this come to pass? Where did we go wrong? I'm talking about the false prophets, you know, not the prophets of God. Where did we go wrong? Then said I, O Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people. God didn't do it. They deceived themselves. Skip on with me, if you would, to verse 20. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tent spoiled and my curtains in a moment. That's when Antichrist appears. What God is about to say here is if you don't think I'm going to bring about this destruction, then don't think it any big deal because I did it once before. That's why that science, the scientific community can prove that this earth is millions of years old because it is. Christianity should teach that it is. The Hebrew text states that it is. But it is not taught. And what God's going to say here in a moment is that I did it then and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to bring you in a new earth age. Okay, listen to it. 21. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? Beloved, we must answer that until God tells us to shut it off. The bruisers must continue to bruise, and we're bruising, until God says shut it down or Antichrist gives us free time one or the other and you're going to get free time because when you're delivered up but still even that do you know what it is i'm going to be delivered up lord that sounds scary no it's the, going to be the biggest revival you ever attended in your life the people are going to be encouraging accept him accept him he's the lord and your own relatives that believe he is the true christ are going to say lord don't be too hard on my little old sister out there. She really thinks you're Antichrist. Forgive her, won't you, Jesus? And the Antichrist will even spot that sister because the other turned her in. Which is as it's written, Mother shall betray the daughter to death, the father, the son, etc. Not to a physical death, to a spiritual death, should they do it, follow it. Mark 13, Matthew 24. That trumpet must sound. And it's going to. For my people is foolish, and they have not known me. No, they're more familiar with the other side. They are sottish. That means they're stupid. Just write stupid there. That's what the word means in Hebrew. They're stupid children, and they have, they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. Not intentionally, beloved. You understand that? They don't mean to. It's that they have left the truth. But to do good, they have no knowledge. They really don't know how. And then he tells of before. What, he, what he's saying here, as I told you earlier, they're stupid. I'm kind of a little bit tired of it. My wrath's building. And he's saying here, I did it before. Listen to it. I beheld the earth. I looked at it. And lo, it was without form. That's tuhu in the Hebrew and void. And the heavens. And they had no light. I mean, this is not Noah's flood. There were, there were birds on the ark and there was even an ark. Boy, void, tuhu valuhu in the Hebrew means flat nothing. All right? When God destroyed this earth, that's why you see the signs of the upheaval. You can go out here in these... Ozark Mountains and even uh, look at a, a cutaway of a bank and you can see signs of it or anywhere in this world you can see signs of it. 
I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved uh, lightly. He said, I can shake it harder. You understand? I beheld, and lo, there was no man, not one, beloved. He destroyed that world that was. Noah's flood, there was Noah and his sons, their children, and I have no doubt that China was not touched by that flood. That world flood was only to cover the cosmos, that part of the world that was inhabited by giants, all right, that had, where the fallen angels had cohabited with the daughters of Adam, and offspring were given to them. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his furious anger. Yes, there were even cities at that time. I'm sure they were beautiful cities. This is why you can go up to Alaska and into Pandra, dig up the remains of, of um, uh, mamma, uh, yeah, Di I'm going to call them dinosaurs. I like to call them dinosaurs, all right? find dinosaurs with buttercups still in their mouth and their stomach frozen in the tundra used to be a swamp beautiful place I guess you know with your little old dinosaurs out there grazing it'd be beautiful I might be a little shaky too I don't know but anyway it was there you know for that's a fact see and God's telling you how that he destroyed that he shifted I and this is only an opinion now I feel he shifted the earth to the point that true north should be where magnetic north is that's how far we're off and that's why we have storms instead of the original uh, umbrella that was around this earth the veil that caused this to be a very healthy place where you didn't have skin cancer etc 27 for thus hath the Lord said the whole land shall be desolate Yet will I not make a fool in. I'm not going to do it for the remnant's sake. I'm not going to destroy it. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. He said, I did it once before. So you better listen. Tell him, Jeremiah. I did it once before. I have, I have proposed it and will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. What are you saying? I'm going to do it. You'll read of that shaking in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. We're not going there. I'm going to stop. You're on your own. The bruisers shall come. The bruisers will bruise the head of serpent, the serpent. And do you know something? We're bruising it already. Satan does not like even a little bit the fact that God has given us the platform whereby we can teach his word without offending anyone. You know, that's the beauty of it. I want you to understand that. In a sense, we don't even offend the Kenite. We only teach truth of what God's Word relates to it. We certainly don't teach hate. God forbid. For our Father is in control. But the bruisers, there are many other places where they are mentioned. Well, not many. There are other words that have been changed from it but that carry the same thought. It's beautiful, and I want you to continue to research it. You'll find them in Ezekiel, and you will find in um, Isaiah a most beautiful scripture concerning Chittim because it works Satan's old T. Asha, as it is written in... Uh, don't write the note I'm about to give as, as, re, as a reference to this because they, it won't stretch. But used in T. Asher, used in the Hebrew in Ezekiel 31 where Satan was the box cedar. He wanted to be a tree of Lebanon, but he was a plain old box cedar. There are no giants, beloved, if you are bold and you teach God's word truthfully, factually. God's angels will protect you in his way, not yours, his way when you are doing his work. So, who knows? Next Passover, maybe he'll give us another look. Maybe he'll lift the veil a little and we can see further in. You can carry that 11th chapter of Daniel quite a bit further now if you'll stop and think with the information you've, we've been given here. 
we can carry that research on considerably. I'm sorry. You're going to have to do it. He didn't give me time. So I love you all, and uh, that's kind of going to be the end of the prophecy in this meeting. We'll have a little more this evening, possibly. But I think it's fantastic, and I thank our Father for opening doors for us, for showing us a little further, giving us a little more understanding. For you see, in 35 years teaching, I have read that verse in Daniel hundreds of times. I've taught it to some of you in this room probably five times in the book of Daniel over and over and over. It's very simple. It's a simple word in the Hebrew tongue. Chittim, the bruisers. But God would not let my eyes see it and apparently not yours. But he knows the time appointed and the moment when he calls these things to our attention. But what I'm telling you is it's not it's not I that do it. It's not you. It's who? It's Almighty God. When he's ready for us, we're all intelligent. Well, well, yes. <laughs> yes, the Irish is coming out. <laughs> it's getting wicked. <laughs> but God does it. And I praise God for his guidance and his direction. And you know something? I wouldn't want it any other way, would you? Man messes up everything he touches, but God at least has a plan, and he's holding to it. This fall meeting is about, this is the Feast of Tabernacles, the actual biblical date, and that's the time of harvest. And bless your hearts, we're beginning to harvest what God really intended us to harvest, and that's souls. Many people get impatient, they'll say, like there was one gentleman called in yesterday and he said to one of the ladies nobody will listen to me so you sit down at that phone and don't you try to get rid of me and you listen he said nobody will listen to me i want to i want one person to convert just one he said all that will listen to me is my wife and my four children you see how sometimes we can we can't see the forest for the trees he already had five in souls, including his own, listening to him, and he wanted more. And many times, two mates won't see alike, and he had that. That's a blessing. You know, sometimes you can't see the blessings, you know, for um, being over greedy. But don't be like this, gentlemen, because it's not time yet. All right, your time of witness is coming down the road, and don't worry. They're going to be knocking your door down to get to the truth. They want to know. There's a time coming they're going to wake up and realize that God's truth is the most precious, valuable thing in this world age. And you got it. When you grow skilled in his word and can speak for our Father or allow our Father to speak through you, it's the most important thing in this world. They're coming, so be impatient. This is not the time. My goodness, if we went out and converted the whole world right now, we couldn't look forward to defeating Antichrist. He's got to have his day, but we can, we're going to have the victory. Primarily, that's, what, uh, the, that's going to be the theme of the studies we'll be doing in this meeting. In a sense, is strengthening you to show you that in the Word, we have the victory. We have promises, and I want you, listen, don't just take hold of them. Believe in your heart, in your spirit, in your body, for they are true. God is not playing church in these end times. He's looking for a people that can face reality and say, hey, that doesn't bother me. I, I can understand that. Everybody's got problems. I've been there. And when it's too rough for everybody else, that's just the way I like it. I operate good under pressure. So. Now, that's the frame of mind. Not that it's going to be that rough, but bless your hearts, we've got it made. <laughs> God has touched our minds. He's given us the truth. We can understand his word. Why should we worry? We don't have anything to worry about. So that will be the theme of this fall fellowship. But the main thing is the fellowship. I know many of you are out in, by yourself. You don't have anyone to fellowship with that can understand what you're saying, what you're thinking. So make sure that you take advantage of that. Enjoy each other. 
your precious family. I figure if we could turn the clock back about 14,000 years, you would see a group of people that would have been in a conflict once before. Hey, if we did it then, we can do it again. I'm talking about God's elect that he chose before the foundations of this earth age. And uh, to some, that would be a weird statement. Believe me, it isn't. Father is the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same forever. And thank God we're going to be with him. And you know something? God's elect will always be together. And that's precious. Absolutely precious. And uh, I, I like to be around people that, are not, that don't have a security blanket other than the Spirit. A lot of people have to take man's traditions and write in a rapture theory. They have to write in this uh, salvation and that salvation. Hey, he's enough. He can handle it his way. And quite frankly, I don't. Uh, I look forward to being able to serve him at that moment. I really do. Now, a lot of people might say, "Well, you, you weird man. He, who would, in the world would want to face Satan?" Hey, we've been. It's nothing new. We've been facing him all the time. This way we can get our hands on him. No, say, we, we can get him face to face. Now, it's foolish to make a statement like that. It really is because we're not to premeditate or even think what we'll say when we do face him because we're not going to get to talk. It's him, all right? But I don't see how anyone could help but relish the thought of being able to serve your father in that way. I really don't. And it disappoints me when I see people that say, oh, I want to I get out of here. Well, the world's bad, but it's not that bad. Mostly, it is an illusion. So we're going to work on that this weekend. The fact that much, you'll notice on the, the uh, schedule, don't listen to rumors. Do you know what rumors will do to you? They'll jar you clear off your hinges. You just you just won't be able to think right. You cannot concentrate on rumors, and why would you want to when you have the facts in his word, you see? You can operate with the greatest intelligence that has ever been gathered concerning an operation before the operation even begins.